The Large Hadron Collider has been lying dormant since 2018. The 27-kilometer-long loop under the ground near Geneva, Switzerland, where protons and electrons are smashed together at warp speed, has been ground zero for some of the most extraordinary discoveries in particle physics. Discoveries that have been key to backing up theories about the fundamental building blocks of our universe. Scientists and engineers have been upgrading the tech at the collider in the hopes that they can find new answers to a question that has confounded them for years. What they end up finding could either help sew together a unified understanding of our universe, or tear it apart into a tattered mess of meaningless chaos. Welcome back to Fact Nominal. Today, we're exploring why the standard model of particle physics might be broken. The standard model of particle physics goes like this. All the matter in the universe is made up of particles. These particles come in two basic types, quarks and leptons. There are six different quarks and six different leptons. Both quarks and leptons are arranged in pairs that range from light and stable to heavier and less stable. In addition to quarks and leptons, there are four forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces are the result of exchanges between force carrier particles, which are kind of like messages exchanged between other particles. These include photons, gluons, and the Z and W bosons. The strong nuclear force, which binds matter together, is carried by gluons. The weak nuclear force, which describes the radioactive decay of atoms, is carried by the Z and W bosons. And electromagnetism is carried by photons. The thing is, nobody has figured out how to include gravity in all this particle action. Gravity is the weakest of the four forces, by a lot. It is hundreds of millions of trillions of trillions of times weaker than the strongest force, electromagnetism. It's why a paperclip can hold fast to a magnet despite being in Earth's gravitational field. Gravity is so weak and the particles being studied are at such small scales that scientists can basically ignore gravity because it doesn't affect the processes happening between the quarks, leptons, and other three forces. But that doesn't mean it's not there. In fact, if we would try to balloon the standard model out to the scale of, say, human bodies or planets, then things get really, really messy. We basically have to split this micro subatomic world and our macro world into two separate realms, into a quantum framework and a relativistic framework. In theory, there should also be a force carrier for gravity called a graviton, but scientists have yet to physically observe it. Another strange thing that we can figure out surrounds the Higgs boson. Discovered back in 2012, the Higgs boson made headlines when it was finally observed at the Large Hadron Collider. Finally, scientists had found this god particle. The particle makes up the Higgs field, which gives mass and force of all the other particles in our universe. Without it, atoms would disintegrate and the universe as we know it wouldn't exist. It was like finding a missing link. The Higgs boson had existed in theory for years, but now physicists had physical evidence to prove it. But there was one problem. If the Higgs boson controls the mass and force of everything, then it should also be applied to gravity. But the boson is very lightweight. The mass scales that gravity acts upon, like you and me and the planets, are trillions of times larger. It again would seem that there are some irreconcilable phenomena going on here between the micro and macro levels. Scientists call this the hierarchy problem. It's weird that the Higgs boson is so lightweight. Super heavy gravitational states should mix together in a quantum mechanical way with the boson and affect its mass. But they don't. It's like all the really heavy stuff has magically cancelled out and left a very lightweight boson with a tiny yet constant mass behind. This is suspicious to many scientists, who have compared the problem to a pencil that seems to stand straight up on its tip without falling over. It seems like such a fine-tuned improbability that it has led many to wonder whether there is really a natural order to anything, or whether our universe is really just a freak accident, unnatural even. Scientists and most humans don't like to think that our world is simply a meaningless accident. And to call the very existence of the universe unnatural is a wild departure from everything science stands for. 
so it's natural that scientists want to find answers. One theory traces a solution all the way back to the beginning of the universe. Relaxation theory suggests that at the very beginning of the birth of the cosmos, everything was compressed into a tiny dot with immense mass. Part of the mass was composed of theoretical particles called axions, which eventually expanded into an axion field. You can think of the axion field as a mattress. In the very beginning of the universe, billions of a second in, the mattress was tightly compressed. At the same time, the Higgs boson was initially huge, corresponding nicely to the huge gravitational masses at the heart of the hierarchy problem. But as the universe expanded, the axion field relaxed. The springs of the mattress uncoiled in the new available space. And as it did this, it fixed the mass of the Higgs boson at the super light levels we observe today. It's just a theory though. So far, we've been unable to observe axions. They remain in the realm of mathematics, numerical calculations that could explain a lot if indeed they actually exist. Which brings us back to the Large Hadron Collider. What researchers have been finding when they smash particles together through the loop is starting to draw some serious question marks that seem poised to threaten the standard model. They've observed behaviors in particles that can be explained within the standard model which pose significant problems to the mathematics of it all. One of these observations is the behavior of a subatomic particle called the beauty quark. Quarks are the stuff protons and electrons are made of, and the beauty quark is the one with the most mass. According to the math of the standard model, when a beauty quark decays or transforms into several less massive particles, it should decay into an equal number of electrons and muon particles, but it doesn't. At the Large Hadron Collider, results have shown that beauty quarks decay much more often into electrons than they do into muons. Another observation scientists have made, this time at Fermilab's particle accelerator in the United States, is that muons wobble. A lot. Muons are like electrons' more massive cousin. Like electrons, they are magnetic. Muons also spin. A combination of spin and charge causes muons to wobble. But when researchers whizzed 8 billion muons around in a superconducting magnet ring, they found that these muons wobbled a lot more than the math in the standard model says they should. And then there is the mystery of the W boson. The W boson is the carrier particle of the weak force. It's electrically charged and helps change the fundamental makeup of particles by switching protons into neutrons and vice versa. This triggers nuclear fusion which lets stars burn and creates the building blocks for galaxies and planets. For a long time, physicists thought they knew the approximate mass of the W boson, about 80 times greater than a proton. But new evidence suggests that the W boson is a bit bigger. While its mass isn't that much bigger, it's big enough to throw off the math of the standard model and affect the calculations of the masses of other particles. All these new observations are challenging the standard model and leading scientists to think that there might be an undiscovered fifth force out there acting upon these particles. A fifth force could help unify the minuscule quantum realm and the massive general theory of relativity. This fifth force could be made up of something called leptoquarks. Like we've mentioned earlier, all matter is made up of two fundamental families of particles, leptons and quarks. The theory of leptoquarks is about as simple as the name. It postulates that there is another particle which is basically a merger of the two distinct particles. At super high energies, leptons and quarks might have a parent particle, the leptoquark. Leptoquarks would be pretty massive as far as particles go and would decay very rapidly into quarks and leptons, which is why, if they do exist, they haven't been discovered yet. But if they are somewhere in the fabric of our universe, then they could explain why those muons are so wobbly, why the beauty quark decays so unevenly, and what's going on with that W boson. Unifying two separate phenomena is not uncommon in physics. Back in the 19th century, James Clerk Maxwell unified electricity and magnetism to explain the force we now know as electromagnetism. If leptoquarks are indeed real, then they would go a long way in helping us form a unified model of the universe.
But still, we need to account for gravity if we want a fully unified theory of everything. In addition to the theory of a fifth force, two others might prove useful in helping us figure out exactly what's going on. Supersymmetry and string theory. Symmetry in nature is easy enough to understand. It's when one thing mirrors another. When Newton connected an apple falling from a tree to the force that keeps the moon in place, he discovered a symmetry. At the subatomic level, there is the theory of supersymmetry. Supersymmetry postulates that each of the 17 known fundamental particles has a partner particle. If this is true, it means we only have half the picture of what's going on in our universe. These supersymmetrical particles would solve the problem of the Higgs boson being so light and work towards incorporating gravity into the equation. Then there is string theory. String theory, or a particular subset of string theory called M-theory, uses theoretical particles called gravitons to sew gravity together with the standard model. Gravitons, which we touched briefly on at the beginning, are as of yet undiscovered in purely theoretical force carriers for gravity. Much like photons are the force carriers for electromagnetism, gluons are for the strong force and the WNC bosons are for the weak force. In string theory, gravitons, photons, bosons, and everything else are not single point particles, but instead minuscule ribbons of energy or strings that vibrate in different ways. Its equations are dense, but described as extremely elegant and more importantly, extremely consistent. However, for string theory to work, there needs to be 11 dimensions which are curled up into tiny balls of space less than 10 to the power of 33 centimeters wide. The strings themselves and these tiny coils of interdimensional space are far too small to be measured by anything like the Large Hadron Collider. 10 million billion times smaller than anything the particle accelerator can detect. So it seems like we're left with questions that still need answering. Is our universe a fluke? Some random coincidence that sprang into existence with no unifying principles to draw it together? Or are the answers still out there waiting to be discovered as we develop the technology to recreate the beginnings of our universe? What do you think? Is there a unified theory out there? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep space content.